rebel scum. Die, Sith! Uh, no! Hola Geek fans, it's that time again, it's 4.30, it's Friday, we're filming at the luxurious Goodrich Studios Internationals, and this is Geeks at the Movies. Today at Geeks at the Movies, it's Halloween! I'm your host Shane Goodrich, and joining me is Darth Jacob. How's it going guys? <sighs> calm down Jake, calm down, we don't have any problems. You know the deal by now folks, this is a movie and TV talk from our perspective, the geek perspective. So let's get right to it with the geek news. Item number one, Jacob, just tell me this. The new and final trailer for Star Wars The Force Awakens has been released. Oh, oh, epic. Epic, Jacob. Epic. Just talk, Jacob. I know you want to talk. Yes, get, I, there's yes. no point in me talking. Okay, so we saw the poster, we did a short on that, and that was like the precursor to this. We got that going. The ghost is back again. That, that, that damn ghost. <laughs> Got, we got that poster, we saw that Leia, Han, all the main characters that are going to be in it. Then we saw that thing, that uh, the Starkiller base, which is basically going to be like the new Death Star, I guess. And then we're all wondering what, what from that poster we're we going to see in this trailer. And we, I think we saw most of it. We saw, but what, what I really want to say is how amazing this trailer <laughs> was. Because, you know, first time in my life, not really, that I watched a football game, you know, sat down. I was like, I was like, oh god, I gotta, I gotta get through halftime. That's dedication right there. I <laughs> feel for you. I gotta get through halftime. Oh. <laughs> and then we got there. I, and I was in the middle of ordering tickets when I when I was doing that. You know how much trouble we had to go through just to get tickets. I was like, the hellish. The oh, the brutality that you're bugging yeah. me on email. That was a yeah. whole mess. And <laughs> luckily, Joe I was able to get the tickets for us. So now we get to see it IMAX. Reserve seating, all that. And we're going to talk to you about it, folks, but continue on about Star Trek. Yeah. Star Wars, the trailer. I sat down, watched the trailer, and honestly, I wasn't crying like in the other trailers, <laughs> but I was still very pleased by what I saw. I w I w what I saw was... Awesomeness. Yes. <laughs> He's, he is he is a lost for words, folks, because Jacob here loves Star Wars, so let me talk. Let me bring it down slightly. So first off, I like the trailer. The trailer was great. But it, it, it did remind me of a few things about the Star Wars universe. There is some cheese in it, yeah. right? A couple of things I'm like, this is kind of cheesy, but you know what? Fuck it. This, let's just do this. It's Star Wars. The special effects were awesome. I love seeing BB-8 following. I don't remember the character's name in the desert. Right. Uh, I, I liked... Um, uh, pretty much everything I saw, uh, it felt to me like Star Wars done right. It reminded me as if they took Star Wars from the, the late 70s, early 80s, and then had to do it nowadays, as opposed to the prequels, which just felt like something it felt like something else with a Star Wars like paint job over it. This felt like Star Wars. One thing I found really interesting, though, was the lack of Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Where's Luke? I think that they're, they're saving him for the end. Oh, maybe not... The, like, the absolute end of the movie, but I think they're saving him for the third act, and they don't want to give away anything about him. Because he, he wasn't in the poster either. And I think that signified that we weren't going to see him in the trailer. Is he the guy with the hand touching R2? Yeah, that, that's, what I, that's what I originally thought, and I still think that's him. But a lot of people are saying, no, that's not him, but I, I think it is him. Maybe even in like a flashback? We don't know, but... Because J.J. Abrams likes to, likes to do flashbacks. <laughs> and, um, well, one, one of the scenes from this trailer that I really liked was... Uh, you you get a sense of who Ray is, uh, the female character, when she she's sitting there in that desert, and you hear her say, "I'm no one," and then you see that the ship lifting off from the ground, her her watching it lift off. You, you get a sense of that she's basically the Luke of this yes. of, the, of this trilogy because she she's stuck on this desert planet, and she wants she wants to go and discover the universe, but she can't because she's she's just stuck here and. Uh, you, I love the shots of her exploring the the was it a battleship the, the star destroyer that Sorry. you see that you see in the in the that you saw in the uh, previous trailer that was uh, that was on Jakku right yeah okay and oh and another shot that I really liked was we get to see uh, John Boyega's uh, Tie Fighter get shot down I, I thought that was a really cool shot and you, we get to hear him speak for the first time and apparently he has a really heavy British accent in real life like it's so heavy that you can't understand what what he's saying interesting so, I don't think I've ever heard of him yeah it, but now he is showing that he's doing an American accent in the in this movie and 
Well, usually, it's, uh, traditionally, hasn't been the bad guys have the British accents in Star Wars? Yeah, like, even Darth Vader, the guy that was in the suit, he had a British accent, yeah. and he didn't know that James Earl Jones was going to do his voiceover, but it turned out for the best. And uh, my, my favorite shot was uh, Kylo Ren. When, when it zooms in on him, and then he... It shows him, like, they cut it together so it made it seem like he was talking to the helmet. He's like, I'm going to finish what you started. And I loved his voice. It wasn't like a copy of Darth Vader or anything. It was it was completely new, original. And then we get to see him with the rest of the Knights of Ren. That's what I like. Yes. The, the scene with the rain. Yes. I mean, are they going to have lightsaber type weapons too? Because they have, looks like a bunch of mishmash of different weapons. It, it, I'm not sure what they yeah, do. It, it look, they, they might be like uh, viral blades, which are basically like... Uh, like practice lightsabers, sort of, I guess. I don't know. They're, but they're they're used by normal people without that aren't force sensitive. What I'm wondering is, are the rest of the Knights of Ren force sensitive? Like, what, like Jacob, can you explain what force sensitive means? I don't know what that means. Force sensitive is what in the prequels he uh, they turned into midi chlorians. <laughs> so it's basically you you have the force in you and you can, you you can use it. That's basically what. But they've already confirmed they're never mentioning midi chlorians again. Yeah. I don't know what that is actually. Or Jar Jar Binks. There we go. <laughs> I mean, I guess if they had a scene of him like getting slaughtered viciously, <laughs> that, that'd be acceptable. Apparently, he J.J. Uh, Abrams wanted to put like his bones in the sand on Jakku, but Lucas one was like, "Nah, you, you can't do that." <laughs> <laughs> uh, they gotta sell those toys. <laughs> yes. But this trailer was it was amazing. It. it it was what I wanted, it, except like a few, a few key things like Luke I wanted to see, and I wanted to see maybe the the uh, Star Killer from the outside. We, we, I'm pretty sure we got to see it from the inside, like when that's where Kylo Ren's uh, standing. But it was a really amazing trailer. It it was worth sitting through the first half of that football game, <laughs> even though I was ordering, trying to order tickets for the most of the part. That is dedication, folks. Let's move on to item number two. It has now been officially announced that King Kong and Godzilla will hit theaters in 2020. Oh my god, this is amazing. The King of the Monsters and the Giant Gorilla Beast, they're going to go at it. This is so epic, Jacob. I've been looking forward to this since a little kid. I saw Godzilla vs. King Kong, the cheesy, god-awful Japanese version. It was awesome when I was a kid. Now I'm looking forward to a whole expanded Kong universe. We have Kong Skull Island in 2016. We have Godzilla 2 in 2018. And it's going to end up finishing with these two beasts fighting it out. Jacob, just tell me how awesome this is. This is pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and like you, I, I wasn't sure if I was really looking forward to this or not. Just because, you know, you think of the older version, like King Kong versus Godzilla, where they're, they're in the suits and they're fighting. Really cheesy. But then... And I, I, I liked Godzilla. I didn't love it, but I liked it. But then, but then at the... Had about 10 minutes or yeah, were good. Yeah, the last 10 minutes, when you see what you, they could do with the action, I right. was like, all right, I, I, I'm really looking forward to see what they do with Godzilla in the future. And now they're bringing in King Kong, and they're going to have them fight. And I, and I am now really excited for this movie. Even, and it kind of makes me sad that we got to wait until 2020. But... That, that's going to be a really stacked year in general for just action-based movies, you know, Marvel, DC, all those movies. All, all the studios are releasing these big movies, and now we get the King of the Monsters versus King Kong. Yeah, this is epic. I'm also really looking forward to Kong Skull Island. Yeah, me too. Right, because I, in the original Godzilla movie, there's, well, the Godzilla movie, not Godzilla, in the King Kong movie, and then the original movie from the 30s, and the King Kong remakes, the best part is always on the islands. Yeah. It, uh, the, all, all, all the movies and the remakes, they all have basically the same arc. The first act is kind of boring. It's a bunch of people talking. Hey, there's something happening. There's this place. Blah, blah, blah. And it's and you don't care. The second act, they get there. And holy shit, there's a bunch of monsters. There's a giant gorilla. There's T-Rexes. And then the third act, they get to the city. And there's no more monsters for, for, God, for um, King Kong to fight. And it gets kind of boring. Yeah. If they just stay on the island, it'll be epic. Yeah. It'll be what I always wanted as a kid. And... They have to make, we said this before, they have to make King Kong bigger, but they can't really make him too much bigger or else he's going to be bigger than the island itself. Really. Yeah, yeah, I am wondering how they're going to work this. I mean, you can have giant trees. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, we have trees right now in the world, in the, in the, the red, Redwood Forest, that are average 250 feet tall. Yeah. 
Godzilla's like, I think, close to 500 feet in the newest in incarnation. Yeah. That's all right. You can have a thousand foot tall trees. Yeah. You could do that, right? It, it's going to be strange, though, if you have like a, a giant forest that is like a, like a cityscape and you have... I, I don't know. It's hard. I'm not sure what they're gonna do, but I think they can work with it. They could make a, they could make a Kong bigger. Um, I've heard some people mention making Godzilla smaller. I think that's kind of lame. Yeah, me too. Because part of the thing about Godzilla is he's so huge. Yeah. And, and Godzilla has grown in size over time as yeah. cities have grown. If you look at the original Godzilla movie that came out, I'm not sure when it came out. The 50s in, in Japan. You know, Tokyo's skyline at that point was much was not nearly as high. The skyscrapers weren't as tall. So Godzilla was only like 300 feet tall. Yeah. His most recent incarnation because of like oh. We don't want to Godzilla to be towered over by these buildings, so we just make him taller, yeah. right? So I don't see him, he's always gotten bigger, why are they shrieking? That'd be yeah. weird. I think, well, uh, even if they just made King Kong like half of Godzilla's size, it would be believable, because he, he would be like the little guy fighting the big guy. Right, and King Kong is much more agile. I mean, he, yeah. he's, he has hands and dexterity much more than Godzilla does. Godzilla's yeah. kind of... That's all kind of lumbers. He's yeah. Like, he, he can't really use his hands, really. Yeah. He has, like, T-Rex arms. <laughs> <laughs> his thing is, you know, his uh, his teeth and his nuclear breath. And I, I really want to see more of the nuclear breath. Right. That, that, that was awesome. <laughs> and uh, I'm really looking forward to Skull, uh, Kong Skull Island, though, because, like you said, that, that, those, that was the best part of all the other movies when they were on the island. And, Definitely. And hopefully they're going to stay on the island for the majority of the movie. Please, please do that. Please. And, and maybe, they'll, maybe um, unlike Godzilla, maybe they'll actually have some interesting human characters, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not counting on that, Jake. Let's not, let's not get too excited now. I'm counting on god-awful characters. I'm counting on <laughs> bad dialogue. Oh, I, I, hold on, hold on. Stop for a second. Let me, let, me, let me look into the future. The orb. The orb of knowledge. I foresee boring human drama. I foresee some actor that's kind of well known and just wasting his time for a paycheck. That's Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> and then I foresee <gasps> King Kong and Godzilla action. Wait, what are we talking about right now? It doesn't matter. I just I just keep thinking about King Kong and Godzilla because it's so fucking mega. Oh my god, this, that, I see awesomeness. That's what I see. Thank you, Orb of Knowledge. Anything else you wanted to say, Jacob? I'm just really excited for 2020 just because of all the movies coming out, including King Kong vs. Godzilla. The epic will continue. Let's move on now to item number. Tree. That's right, item number three. Marvel has announced a sequel to Ant-Man. It will be released on July 6, 2018. And it will be titled Ant-Man and the Wasp. Along with this announcement, Marvel has also revealed that three untitled movies will be released in 2020. Jacob, this was this was announced, the title Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then Marvel. I thought they did something kind of stupid. They're like, oh look, see a female character is, is in the title. I'm like, yeah, a second billing, yeah. right, for, for a sequel that we've already seen her in. When you have much other, and you push back what uh, the 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 Captain Marvel movie, yeah, which is actually <laughs> a female well, yeah. lead, yeah, right. So I'm not sure why they bothered saying that. It just made it kind of obnoxious and like, kind of, <laughs> but whatever. Who cares? I love Ant Man. Check out our Ant Man review. I'd love to hear geeks of the movies. Tell me what you think about this. Uh, I I'm uh, generally pretty excited for the an Ant Man sequel. Uh, just because of, of how awesome the first one was. It, it was, it was a little bit of a surprise how much I liked it, because I knew I was going to like it because it was Marvel, but I didn't really know how much, uh, like, how much I was actually going to enjoy this movie. Uh, so I liked it as much as, uh, what was the other movie, Avengers 2. Yeah. Age of, uh, I, I, think, I think I liked it just as much, it was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now going into uh, 2018, we're going to get this new sequel. And I, I actually like the name, even though... The, na the name's not a problem for me. Yeah. It was just the kind of the obnoxious comment that I heard yeah. about it. Oh, look, we got the female character now, yeah. second billing. Yeah. Right? It's like, what? Why'd you say that? Don't even bring that up. Yeah. But... <laughs> It, it is cool because it shows that she's definitely going to be in the movie now, right. and we're we're gonna get like, I I guess kind of the first team up that is that the like where the title is actually a team up title. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. think about that. So that that that's really interesting. But what does suck is that both uh, Black Panther and Captain Marvel got pushed back now, which are which were the two movies that I think I was looking forward to the most in uh, Phase Three. But it also like, looks it, it it makes Marvel again look you know socially unsensitive, maybe you want to say. Yeah. It's like, well, the black guy and the woman just push them back. Yeah. <laughs> woo -hoo! We got this really successful movie, so <laughs> we're going to put the sequel in front of them. Yeah. But I I am really excited to uh, to see this, and I, I'm actually uh, 
really excited for how much how like how much Ant Man we're going to get in Phase Three because it's going to be in Civil War and now he's going to be in this. And he's probably going to be in the Infinity War movies too. I actually were you surprised at all about this announcement because Ant Man for a Marvel movie didn't do as well. Yeah. But I know I know it probably didn't cost as much. You're right. It was, it was definitely a, one of the things I liked about Ant-Man was a smaller scale. Yes. You can't just keep ep you can't just keep making things more epic. Yeah. I get annoyed by that. Yeah. Let's just out epic this. Let's just make you more explosions, more awesomeness, more characters. Like we're getting in Captain America: Civil War, which I hope it turns out well. Yeah. But you I mean you can't just keep doing that. And I like the fact that they they pulled it back and they're like, yeah. we'll make it smaller. But I'm still surprised because the, the reception wasn't as as big as I thought. But they announced this right afterwards. They must have faith in the property. Yeah. I. Uh, I I wasn't really surprised. Like I was surprised that they just put this like sm like smack right in the middle of Phase Three. But I wasn't really surprised they were making a sequel. Hmm. Just because uh, I I know I'm pretty sure they have faith in all their properties. Like except for Hulk. Yeah, except for Hulk. <laughs> but um, so I, I wasn't really surprised about that. But I I just didn't want them to like, you know just put it right right in the middle and push back these other movies that I'm really excited yeah, about. Yeah, that, that was the bizarre thing I found. But it, that, it shows they have, to me that tells you they have more faith in Ant-Man than these other properties. Yeah. So, it, probably, and, and they probably just want to, uh, they, they, they want to put it in the middle. So, like, hey, remember remember that movie that you liked at the end of Phase 2? Now, right now, you can see it in the middle of Phase 3 now. So, I, generally, I'm, I'm pretty excited for, for this movie and this project. And I'm really excited to see uh, uh, Evangeline Lilly as the Wasp. Cause yes. Because that we there was that end credit scene where she walks in, sees the suit, and then you're like, oh, all right, we're getting the wasp in the next movie. And they were really kind of stretching it, not actually have her just become the wasp in the movie. Yeah. I mean, they had some, they had a decent explanation why she didn't do that, but a couple times it was like, really, she seems pretty capable. She, I think she's ready to 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 go into yeah. action, right? Yeah. So this makes sense that they're not, you can't you can't push it back. Just, yeah. just go with it. And um, I think we're, you know we're gonna see Paul Rudd as Ant Man and um, her as the wasp. But I think we're also going to see. The past, the the uh, past Ant Man and the Wasp in this movie. Ah, too. Michael Douglas. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get we're gonna get, uh, get to see who played as the the uh, the past Wasp. Ooh, who, we'll, who, we'll see more CGI young Michael Douglas. Yes. <laughs> excellent, <laughs> breaking people's noses. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about this? I'm really excited. Once again, oh, we forgot to mention the uh, the three untitled movies Ooh. in 2020. But I I think. That doesn't to me. I, I don't really care about that. It's their untitled. I yeah. knew they keep. That's their schedule they're doing. I just expect it to happen. Yeah, I, I'm not really gonna uh, speculate on what's it going, what what they're going to be. Probably Iron Man four. W maybe with a new actor. Maybe Captain America four. Uh, we we have to see how Phase three uh, turns out to see really uh, speculate on what these movies are going to be first. Very well then. Let's move on to item number four. Now we're tuning into the Marvel TV Universe. It is connected, though it's kind of tenuous, the connection, I find. Anyways, enough editorializing. Netflix series Daredevil, the, the latest trailer has been released online. It gives us our first glimpse of Elektra and Punisher. So, Daredevil Season 2 is going to be coming out, when is it, be, when is it coming out? Sometime in 2016. Sometime in 2016. We got our first brief glimpse of Punisher, played by Shane from The Walking Dead. Yeah. What's, his, what's his name, the actor? John Bernthal. Oh, there you go. I'm going to keep calling him Shane from Walking Dead because it's easy for me to remember. Yeah. <laughs> and we saw some brief clips of Elektra. Jacob, what did you think? Uh, I thought this trailer was, was okay. You know, it, Medium? It, Medium? Yeah. It, it, was, it definitely was a teaser trailer. Yeah, this it, was a tease. It, it, was based, it was only like 30 seconds long. It, it just it gave us brief glimpses of what we're going to see in Season 2. But overall, I am really excited for Season 2 just because of how awesome Season 1 was. Yes. And I'm really excited to see John Bernthal as the Punisher. Perfect casting. And, and good job, and, Marvel. And just the fact that we're getting the Punisher again, because you know we we, we got that movie with uh, can't remember the, uh, the actor who who was in the movie. It was it was the one with John Travolta as the villain. <laughs> but I I I'm in the minority, but I actually like that movie. And then then we got I never uh, saw it. I'll, I'll recommend it to you on a future future, oh, future second. <laughs> then, then we I'm got slaughter him, folks. <laughs> Where's that sword? <laughs> <laughs> then we got. Um, Punisher War Zone, which I know a, I, I'm the worry on this also because a lot of people like that more than the other one, and I, I didn't like it. I I don't know. It, it was just too over the top action. I don't know. <laughs> but now we're getting the Punisher in this more serious, uh, more serious uh, universe that Marvel has set up with their Netflix series. It fits it. Punisher fits Daredevil perfectly. Yes. The very little, you know, the Electra. Uh, 
scene that we saw was no, I didn't really care. Yeah, she she's just putting on. It was her too brief mask. for me to imagine. Yeah. But Punisher, seeing him walk in the hospital from behind, I'm like, it, it created a sense of like uh, it was ominous. Yeah. He had, he, had, he had a presence because I knew also his character from The Walking Dead, Shane from The Walking Dead. The reason why I'm so psyched about it is because he essentially played the Punisher already in The Walking Dead. Yeah, he just, just some he was he was just more of an asshole. <laughs> right, <laughs> but he was pretty much the Punisher, like because yeah. he in his mind he's like I'm doing this for the right reasons, and yeah. he got sacrifices half Green Raid. Otis has to be killed so I can save other people. Like Punisher, yeah. this is the things that like, Punisher I can imagine doing. Yeah, right. And uh, I think that one line, the, the the one word you hear him say, it just like capitalized everything the Punisher is. Beg. Like that, that's all. That's all you had to hear him say. In exactly. The trailer. Exactly. I agree. Uh, let's move on to item number five. A report has come out claiming that the Hulk will appear in the upcoming Thor Ragnarok movie, and that the majority of the movie will not take place on Asgard or on Earth, but an entirely new planet. What planet could it be, Jacob? I have no idea. <laughs> but I do. But I am excited that Hulk is going to be in this new Thor movie if this report is to be believed, because. You know, spoiler, we haven't seen Avengers Age of Ultron yet, but... you know, Why he, are you watching this show? Yeah. Stop the show and go watch it. Come <laughs> back. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, you know, he, he goes somewhere, but I, I don't really believe this report, even though I want it to be true, just because, you know, how does the Hulk get into space in the first place? Like, I, I, he I, jumps. You <laughs> <laughs> can jump pretty high, Jake. Yeah, I don't know. If you need the, the, he gets in the space and just floats. <laughs> but he gets angry and angry at nothing. <laughs> maybe like when maybe, maybe Thor goes onto Earth for something, and then Hulk just like grabs onto him as, as like while he's like uh, transporting himself back to Asgard, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Um, I I do think though that he's going to be the Hulk. He's not like he's not going to be Bruce Banner. Maybe not even at all in in this new movie. I think he's going. Something's going to happen where he's he's like going to be stuck in this state. Because remember, in Age of Ultron, he had to go through that lullaby thing to get turned back into yes. into uh, Banner. So, but also he he uh, can just get knocked out too and then turn back into Banner as well. Yeah. But so I think he will be the Hulk. I don't think they're going to you know call it Thor and the Hulk, but. I, I think it def definitely is going to be a Thor movie, and I think the Hulk will play a minor part. It, I, like I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be like a big team up uh, type of uh, type of thing. I think it's just going to be Hulk in a minor role in this big thing because Ragnarok, that's the Asgardian apocalypse. Yes. So it has to be a Thor movie, and also that's, that's why I also don't believe it uh, because it's saying it's going to be on an entirely new planet. I think it has to be on Asgard, or maybe even like. It was just on like a different dimension that then I could believe it because there's this big demon called like Sir that pulls like this fire sword and that causes the apocalypse. So I I don't really believe this report even though I I do but just because I want to see more of the Hulk because he's one of my favorite characters from the comics and then you know we got the Incredible Hulk which I liked it wasn't great but I liked it and then we got Mark Ruffalo in the Avengers and Avengers Two and you know he he was a really great Hulk. So I want to I want to see more of that, and they're not giving it to us because they they don't really believe like like where he said they don't really believe in a Hulk standalone film. Right, they don't. They don't. They don't have faith in the character that he can be interesting because Hulk when he becomes Hulk, it's just Hulk smash, Hulk break things, and Hulk also has like that. He has that Superman complex yes. where it's like, who challenges the Hulk? Yeah. He can be anyone. He just gets angry and angrier, and he's he's basically invincible. Yeah. Right. So there's that. There's that. Problems like how do you create a, a credible challenge while not diminishing the Hulk? Yeah. Because what? Because like with Superman, like I used to watch like when I was a kid this cheesy '50s show about Superman, right? And the special effects sucked. And every time they they they, they couldn't create credible challenges, and what they did was they just undermined Superman. He's like he no longer felt so powerful. It's like what everyone can just can just fight him. He's that powerful. So if Hulk uh, is so easily fought, it's like well, it undermines the fact that Hulk is super powerful. That's why, like in Avengers two, they didn't say just have Hulk fight Ultron. It's like why didn't you just have Hulk go rip him apart, right? Because they knew that that'd be a problem, right? If they have a battle and Hulk doesn't just smash him, right? Because he's so powerful. So yeah. they held him back to the end, where then he smashes Ultron. Yeah. Spoiler alert if you didn't know that, <laughs> right? So I'm interested to see what happens in Thor Ragnarok. Um, but right now, my mind is still on Marvel's uh, Captain America Civil War, uh, and 
My, my opinion about what will happen with Thor and Hulk and Thor Ragnarok will, will depend on that movie. Because I'm worried, like, is, is it going to be a Captain America film? Is it actually going to be Captain America? So here with Thor Ragnarok, I'm going to assume that after Captain America Civil War has been announced, we're going to get more actors, more other Avengers, more other Marvel characters that are going to be shoving into Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that happening. And depending on how they, they pull it off for um, Civil War, that will inform my opinion on what, what, what's going to happen here. Yeah. I, I don't think we're going to get um, that many tie-ins in Civil War, but they, had, they did announce, I, I think they announced that at least, that Sif is going to be in uh, Civil War. So that maybe she's like in the end credit scene and that'll be a, a tie-in to Thor Ragnarok. Maybe, something, maybe something's uh, going on there. Uh, but like you, I, I am uh, pretty excited for both Civil War and uh, Thor Ragnarok. And and yeah, we, we can't really speculate that much just because this is just a report, hasn't been confirmed, and, you know, we, we need to see how Phase 3 is going to be shaped, because it is, is going to be shaped by Civil War, because that's the first film in it, and it, it's, you know, like, it's probably going to be one of the biggest films in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Alright, let us move on to more Marvel news. Item number six. Multiple teaser trailers for Marvel's Jessica Jones have been steadily released over the past few weeks, with the most recent featuring a voiceover from David Tennant's character, Kilgrave, a.k.a. the Purple Man. Jacob, who the hell is the Purple Man? So, I actually watched this uh, video that explained the whole horribly messed up past of Jessica Jones, and it, I'm going to explain a little bit to you. It, it might, might you, some, some people might consider this a spoiler for what's going to happen in the show, but it is, it is just what is from the comics. So, she, uh, she, she was just a, a regular person who got her powers, uh, very similar to how Daredevil got his powers from radioactive fluids got spilled on her, and she was in a car crash, and her parents, got, her parents and her, her brother got killed, but she survived. So then she ha has all these uh, like amazing powers, she has super strength, she can sort of fly, she, she can fly, but she's really bad at it, apparently. And then, so, then, after that, she, she uh, becomes the superhero Jewel, and then she goes to uh, face this guy called Kilgrave, who has the power to like emit pheromones uh, like through through his skin that uh, can like manipulate people. Then he kidnaps her for like eight months, and then it never says that he rapes her, but he does sexually abuse her for that entire time. And then then she get then she still, like I don't know if he just like releases her or whatever. And then that but then. She's just like, get, get, you know, it was like a totally different person now, and she doesn't want to be a superhero anymore. So then she starts this detect, uh, detective agency to be kind of like, I guess, kind of to track down people like Kilgrave and stop them before they can do what he did to her. So this is definitely going to be a very a much darker show than what we've seen, even darker than Daredevil, I think. Ooh. And I, th I think uh, these uh, these teaser trailers kind of. Uh, Capitalize that on a little bit, uh, I think definitely in the the last one with David Tennant, because he you know you hear him, he's like I know your secret, <laughs> and I I think he's going to be really good as a uh, as uh, the Purple Man, but why the hell is he purple? Come on, come on. <laughs> I wonder I want to be purple man. <laughs> but, Do you have a scarf or something? Yeah, yeah, he has a purple scarf on. Awesomeness. But, yeah. I'm gonna get a purple bow tie and I'll be purple man. <laughs> but, but what did you think about these teaser trailers? I liked it. I liked it because it gave me the same tone as Daredevil. I felt that it was gritty, it was down to earth. Uh, the brief glimpses of the characters felt, it felt like a real living world, unlike Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Marvel's <laughs> other big property on the TV, I keep going back to it. Any chance I get to bash it, I want to bash it. It's because I just don't get it. How can they do it on Netflix and not do it on ABC? ABC, you've got a much bigger budget to work with, or, or at least you're a much bigger company, I just don't get it. I want, this is what I want. This, give me more of this. This tease gave me, gave, uh, it put me at ease. I go, oh, this, they're doing this right. Yeah. Sweet. And uh, I think my favorite teaser was the one where she's in the bar and she, she smacks the, the jukebox so it uh, doesn't work and she like, put, like pushes it over a foot. And then, <laughs> like, then she's walking through the bar and they're, all the guys are knocked out and she uh, takes a shot. I thought, I thought that uh, kind of showed the fun side of this show that has really dark source material to it. I mean, the first thing we saw, I think, of her was her breaking her alarm clock. Yeah. Uh, and, she just crushes it. And remember how I was saying that she she can't really fly? In, in that other t um, 
teaser where she, where she jumps uh, to, uh, to the floor that her agency is on. I, I think, I don't think she's gonna fly just because I don't think that really fits with her character, like who she is, like, and ha like how this world that's supposedly like, more down to earth. Uh, budget wise, yeah. flying is a little more expensive. <laughs> yeah. So I think she's gonna jump a lot, like when, when no one's looking really, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> how convenient. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in one of these teaser trailers, I think it might have been like the first one where we never we we didn't see any real footage. Um, you see the Avengers Tower like way off in the distance, so it shows that they they, they want to they want to, uh, to make sure that you know that it's in the same universe. I like those little drops, those hints. I like them. I want more of them. I know some people don't like it when they when they do it. I I enjoy them. Yeah, and I, I liked how they didn't actually show up. Christian Ritter's face until the last one. I, like they, they, they were slowly teasing it as it went on, and then in the last one they finally showed it. And I think they're probably gonna release like one more full trailer before the the actual series gets released because we still have like a whole month until the the, uh, the series gets released. But it's actually kind of killing me because I just want to see more of this world that 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 they have in this uh, in the Netflix series because Daredevil was so awesome, and then and now now they're carrying it over into this new series of this really unknown character. I want to see how that, how they're going to flesh that out. Uh, it's epic. I am super excited for what Marvel's doing on Netflix. Keep it up, Marvel. But let's now move on to a part of the show that we like to call Geek Talk. Oh yeah, sorry, Skull. This is where you pick anything from the Geekverse and we talk about it. This week we're talking about our favorite horror movies. I don't really like horror movies. <laughs> you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of them, but I do have one that I really like and I'll, I'll mention it in a moment. But Jacob, why don't you talk about this? Yeah. I'm going to make a little bit of an editor's note right now. We, we already did uh, our favorite horror movies in a previous episode. So now we're just going to talk about horror movies in general. So we can talk about ones we, we hate, ones we like, whatever. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start off with... Uh, some some horror movies that I really do like, I I really like The Evil Dead. The, 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 those are probably my it's probably my uh, favorite horror movie franchise. It started off, you know, classic horror, cabin in the woods type thing. Pe uh, uh, kids kids get possessed, get killed, you know, cl cl classic slasher horror thing. But then it just totally went off the deep end, but in a good way. Like it, it start, just like integrated. You know, crazy action and uh, comedy into into. Was it. this the Chainsaw Hand guy? Yes, yes. Oh I'm gonna make you watch it, and oh you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna beat your. Words. Oh God! <laughs> but then, but then they rebooted it. Uh, but it, it I, I don't know if it was in like the same years or whatever. But they they, they made a reboot, with, which was with like whole whole new um, characters, and it was really good. It was in like 2013, and it, it was. It was like went back to the original had that classic horror feel and it it was really good and now they're having a a TV series called Ash uh, Ash versus the Evil Dead and I'm really excited for that 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 comes out on Halloween. He's gonna have the chainsaw hand thing. Yes, and in the, in the teaser wow. trailer, there's this really bad shot where they show <laughs> they show it uh like they're, they're tossing the chainsaw to him and he he reaches out with his stub and then it like <laughs> catches on to his stub and he just starts the chainsaw. I'm like, yeah, that was a really bad show, but I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. <laughs> you didn't even tell me about this movie. I just, I just can't even picture it. It's just so stupid. Well, you're going to watch it now. Oh. <laughs> but um, moving on to some more uh, ones I like. Uh, Cabin in the Woods was... That, that, that was released in like 2013, I think. That wasn't a movie. I saw The Blair Witch Project! I haven't seen that movie. <laughs> I thought, I thought, that's a third horror movie I've, I've seen, I, I, I thought of. Sorry. I've been but, trying to think of other yeah. ones that I've seen. Yeah. I haven't seen very many. Um, <laughs> I'll finish up my thoughts on this and then you can talk. But, um, Cabin Loops was really good because it kind of just, it was another um, horror comedy that was more horror than comedy, but it, it like, had, like, all of the, like, pr pretty much every single horror uh, movie monster and, like, scenario they can think of they just shoved all that into that into this movie and it, it was great it, it had like some really great uh, surprise cameos it was just an awesome movie does that work though horror comedy that seems like it doesn't really work because it's like to undermine the premise of horror yeah well, when i think of horror comedy i think of those horrible spoof movies like scary the whole the scary movie things yeah. and all those but but this it it, it worked because they they, they didn't focus on the comedy. They focused on the overall premise of the movie, which was this like underground society that is basically behind every single horror movie ever. It, it but it, it was um, those are some of my favorite horror movies. But you, as you already said, you're not a big horror movie fan. But 
What do you want to say about horror movies in general? Blair Witch Project sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember I had seen that, and I remember the hype around it. It was back, I don't remember, I don't remember when it came out, but the hype was so much. It, it, was, it, it couldn't live up to the hype. It, it was because of... Um, it was it was like one of those one of the first movies that was found footage. Right, and it, that was a new thing, yeah. and, it, and it went big. And I remember I saw the movie, and you know you're kind of like, oh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And the movie ends, you're like, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Right? Oh, I so bad. I still kind of want to see it, and, and like nothing I, happens. I was looking for a horror. Jake, Jake, I'll tell you what happens. This is what happens. Did you hear something? What was that? Was that? Did you hear something? Shaky cam. Shaky. Yeah, that, that's what happens. <laughs> that's it. But I I, I still kind of want to see it, but. At, I will say that, like when I was uh, looking for horror movies to watch, uh, like all through this month, every time I saw the Blair Witch Project, I was like, eh, "I'm gonna look for something else." <laughs> yeah, but, we'll put that we'll put on the back burner for now. Yeah, but um, have you ever have you seen any other horror movies that you uh, haven't really liked, like the ones that you saw and you were just like, "Blair Witch uh, Project sucked." Okay. Um, have you seen any uh, classic horror movies? Like, I've have... seen two: The Shining and Carrie. Okay, and, and they're both good. I didn't like Carrie. I, I did you like the original Carrie? No, I did not like that movie at all. Actually. I liked Carrie. I, I remember. I, I don't remember anything about it though, so maybe maybe it's bad. I saw it as a kid. I, I, I remember. I, I did read the book though because I um I used to have this thing where I, I loved Stephen King movies or, or books, and I wanted to read all of them before I saw the movies. But now I'm more of a movie fan, so I just I just watch the movies right. anyways. That's right, and but I I saw Carrie after I saw after I read the book, and I, I just I don't know. It was just, it was just boring. And it, like, I didn't, I didn't think the acting was good. Or I'm not gonna defend it because I don't really remember it, but I remember yeah. I do remember liking it. The only one I will defend though is The Shining, which I've seen multiple yes, times. And that's by Stanley Kubrick, and it is amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. We yeah. talked about The Shining recently. When we, when did we talk about that? A couple weeks ago, I think. A couple weeks ago, I find out on one, uh, one of the shows. I like The Shining, but Jake, I don't really have that much to say about horror movies. I know this is a Halloween show. Uh, I was thinking some other Halloween-esque shows that, that I like, uh, uh, movies that, it's not like horror per se, it's like uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, you ever seen that with Gary Oldman playing I have, Dracula? I haven't seen it, but I want to, just because of Gary Oldman. It's Gary Oldman playing Dracula, it's, yeah. it's amazing. I mean, it's got Keanu Reeves and he's terrible, and every, <laughs> every scene he's in is garbage, with, and he has this god-awful fake British accent, right? I'm into it now. But it's got Anthony Hopkins and he's good, and it's got Gary Oldman's fucking Dracula, <laughs> and it is a gothic masterpiece. Visually, yeah. it's stunning. It has lots of problems, but visually it's stunning in Gary Oldman's Dracula. Have you seen uh, Nosferatu? I've seen... Yes, I have! I have seen I've seen both. That, I, the original and the remake. Basically like the first horror movie. Yeah, that's true, and, yeah. And I remember I watched that, and I, and I, I was kind of bored, but... but I, Watch the remake, because it's, cause it's in the 70s, it's in color, and it's basically like shot for shot, but it does, you know, it's much mo more modern equipment. Yeah. And, and it but, works to me better. Yeah, but, but seeing the the original, I, I I will say that it was a cinem cinematic achievement. Just, yeah, just, yeah. Oh, oh definitely. Of the dark tones that they set up and it. The, a lot of the, even nowadays, a lot of the shots like are effective. Like it's really cool. Like a lot of it's creative. Uh, the special effects at the time were groundbreaking. Yeah. But those fall apart nowadays. Yeah. It looks so obvious a lot of times. But some of the cinematography today still holds up. Like the shots hit uh, the shadow of him coming up the stairs. Yeah. It's still really impressive. Yeah. And, um. So, some more other classic horror movies. Like I want, I want to mention Halloween here because you know it's the Halloween show, and uh, there was a uh, the, the nineteen seventy eight I think the original Halloween movie. I remember I sat down and watched that. And that was another another classic movie that I was just I was just bored. I didn't like. It. I know I'm gonna probably get some hate for that, but, <laughs> but it was I just didn't like it. And I, Fuck Halloween. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like the. Uh, what? I didn't like the Rob Zombie movies either. Right? But th that was for a different reason. Like, <laughs> those were just bad movies. No one liked those movies, yeah. Jake. <laughs> 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 but was, uh, I will say, uh, you know, J Jamie Lee Curtis. That that was her breakout role in that movie. She she, she was pretty good. Then then the old guy that plays the the uh, detective. I think, you know, the, the the acting was good. But but the suspense, I I didn't really think that was there at all. And then, uh. And there's some other ones like I mean, I have seen the original Friday the Thirteenth, but it actually doesn't have you know Jason as as we know him in that movie. He, he's he's the kid that drowns in the lake, but it's his like you, you don't know who's killing the people. I don't I don't want to spoil it. You you don't know who's killing the people in the movie, but it's not Jason. So they, they they keep it a mystery throughout that, and and I think in like the second one they bring in Jason with the, with the hockey mask and the machete, and I haven't seen. Uh, Jacob, this is getting to be a long segment of sh I, movies I, we I haven't know. seen. I know. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I was ended out with uh, with Friday the Thirteenth. I haven't seen um, or no, uh, 
not Friday the Thirteenth, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I haven't seen the the no, original ones, that. but I saw the that awful, awful remake in, in twenty thirteen. I think. Oh my God, that was so bad. But, <laughs> but we're just gonna end it on that bad note right now. All right, that's how we do things. I kick to the movies. <laughs> now it's time for a segment we like to call Old School. This is where we talk about any movie that's over 10 years old. Jacob, it's simple, right? Yes, it is. Indeed. Today we are talking about, what are we talking about? Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. I could have rewatched this for the segment because I don't remember anything about it. But then I had a story I, 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 could, I could mention about it. So I went, let's go with this, even though I don't remember anything about the movie. Jacob, you talk first. Yeah, I, Indiana Jones is another one of my favorite film franchises. Really? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious because I. What I, the fuck do people like this movie so much for? <laughs> so many people like this, like like Indiana Jones. I don't see how it's, amazing it's, it is. Because it's, it's an adventure classic. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I really like these movies and and the. Temple of Doom, I know it's the only one that you've seen, so that's why I kind of chose it, but it's also... Oh, that's why! Watch the other two! Yeah, watch it. But, but, this, is, but this one is my favorite, I, out, of, out of all the four. <laughs> the, but no. The, the fourth all one three. was more of an endurance test than... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the brutality! But, but I, I really like this movie just because, you know, it, it kind of, after the first movie, kind of just capitalized even more of what Indiana Jones is all about, even though... Did you know that it's actually a prequel to the first one? It, even though it's the second movie, they, they made it a prequel, but... It... I actually, I just love this movie. You know, everything from... Er, everything from short round to the guy going, Camila, Camila, And I, I just... It, it, it just gives me shivers thinking about it. It's, it's, almost, it's almost like Star Wars. Maybe what?! Like, yes! Really?! Yeah. yeah. What, what, what do you want to say about this movie, you hater? <laughs> I want to say that this is what I remember about it. I saw it on TV, and the next day on the school bus, I was talking to everybody about it because I, I loved it so much. Oh, yeah? Right. But I was a little kid, and I've seen clips of it since then, it's just not my kind of movie. Right? As a little kid, though, this is what I remember. I remember the movie was nonstop action. There's like a, a scene there in a plane, and they come out on a raft, they're like, we're not on a mountain. And I, I don't remember anything about the movie except for that, and then talking about the next day on the school bus, and being like, it was so cool, it was so cool. But now when I. I rewatched some of that particular movie, and this is what I'm like. I'm like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's not for me. You know I'm not into these kind of things. I like to be in a fantastical setting. I like to be. I like historical dramas. I don't like things that are just kind of take. I like modern day action movies. Just like I like Mission Impossible. If it's kind of like set in, in today's world. Well, it, 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 was it, it, it was set in the 1940s. He's fighting. He's fighting Nazis. <laughs> it's it's too Nazis. close. It's too. It's. Uh, it's, not, it's not doing it for me. <laughs> if they had some more, do they have like a. Like, uh, any mystic elements in the movies? Yeah, yeah in, in Temple of Doom. What do they, they have? Like, they, they, like special effects? Like, like, they magic have, users? I'm putting down my lightsaber that I was going to slaughter you with. But, <laughs> but there's, um, but there's the, the, the big thing. In the temple, there's this, like, big magical pit that they put people, they sacrifice people into, and then it, and they, there's the guy, he, like, rips out people's hearts, and then goes, Kamila! <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, the powers, like, power people, like, like from Lord of the Rings or like comic book like heroes and they can have special powers. No, <laughs> but th th there's mystical like there's mystical overtones. Elements. Indiana yeah. Jones is a bullwhip and a fedora. Yeah, that's He's all. A, that's all you need, Shane. That's and, and, all you need. Sorry, it's not, I guess it's not for me. Have you? In Maybe he'll force me to watch it again yeah, for some I, segment. I'll force you to watch the the original. Oh, so <laughs> watch so the much, first. So much movie. brutal force. Yeah, do you know of the the famous scene in the original where there's that guy like? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I, lo I love that, that scene then. That it is a clever scene, I agree. And, and it was because uh, apparently Harrison Ford had food poisoning. He, yes. he didn't want to do he didn't want to do an action scene. He was like, C can I just shoot him? And then Steven Spielberg was like, yeah, <laughs> go right, ahead. Go do it. Yeah. So I, I think this is definitely a cinematic classic and a cinematic masterpiece, I think. And that, it's, not on, it's definitely not on the, the level of Star Wars for me, but it is one of my favorite film franchises. Your face. And they actually uh, um, already kind of announced a, well they didn't announce, but they hinted at a Indiana Jones 5 with no. Harrison Ford no. and Steven Spielberg returning. No. It could be good, you know. No. I, I, I do want them to make an Indiana Jones 5, but no. not, not with not with them. I want them to go go away. I know. want them to make an Indiana Jones 4. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't put aliens in it. That doesn't work. God Spielberg. damn it. <laughs> Stop but, talking about it. Just yeah. 
I agree with Joe Hyland. It's not about anymore. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But I did have that one little vignette I gave you in my childhood where I did enjoy it. It's yeah. just not quite my flavor of movie. Maybe you'll get me to watch one of the other movies and maybe I'll like that more or Sean something. Connery's in the third one is dead. You're not helping things. You're not helping things. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, folks. We've reached that sad, sad, disappointing time again where we're near the end of Geeks at the Movies for today. We're near the end of our Halloween special spectacular. Jacob, did you want to leave our illustrious geek fans with any, any final thoughts? You can follow us on Twitter, you can like us on Facebook, and you can email us at... What the hell is our email? I don't know what it is. What are you doing? Geeksatthemovies.ct at gmail.com. Oh, yeah, you know it. Mm -hmm. Anything else today, Jake? You know, also... Uh, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel at Geeks at the Movies, and where can they watch us on TV? They can watch us on CBC 5 and Charter 192, 4.30 every Friday. It's epic, folks. We're taking this to the max now. Gooder Studios International is not independent of our former studio oh. charter. <laughs> I'm the wig maker. Do you have fun making the wigs? Oh. <laughs> it looks like you're treated well, at least. <laughs> I make the wings! <laughs> I'm the bone crusher! We turn it and get it all crushed up! And then we take the bodies! And we put it in here! And here we go!